Chapter 5 of Iracema, The Honey Lips, A Legend of Brazil, by José de Alencar, translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 5 The prairie cock raises his scarlet crest from out his home. His clear trill announces the approach of day. Darkness still covers the earth, but already the savage people roll up the hammocks in the great taba and walk towards the bath. The old pajé, who had watched all night, talking to the stars, and conjuring the bad spirits of the darkness, entered furtively into the wigwam. Lo, thundered forth the boré, filling the valley with its booming sound. The active warriors seized their weapons and rushed to the prairies. When all were collected in the large and circular okada, the chief, Irapuã, sounded the war cry. Tupan gave to the great Tabajara nation all these grounds. We guard the serras, which supply with water the rivers and the fresh ipus, where grows the maniva and the cotton. We have abandoned to the barbarous Potiguara, eaters of prawns, the naked sands of the sea, with the tablelands wanting wood and water. Now these fishers of the beach, always conquered, give seaway to the white race, the warriors of fire, the enemies of Tupan. Already the Emboabas have stood upon the Jaguaribi River. Soon they will be in the prairies of the Tabajaras, and with them the Potiwaras. Shall we, lords of the villages, do like the dove who hides in her nest while the serpent curls himself along the branches? The excited chief brandishes his tomahawk and hurls it into the middle of the circle. Bending down his forehead, he hid his eyes, ruddy with rage. Irapuã has spoken, at length he said. The youngest of the warriors advances. The sparrow hawk hovers in the air. When the nyambu rises, he falls from the clouds and tears out his victim's heart. The young Tabajara warrior, son of the serra, is like the sparrow hawk. The possema of war thunders and re-echoes. The young warrior lifted up the tomahawk and in his turn brandished it. Whirled rapidly and menacingly in the air, the chief's weapon passed from hand to hand. The venerable Anjira, brother of the Pajé, let it fall, and stamped upon the ground with his foot, still firm and active. The Tabajaras are struck by this unusual action. A vote of peace from such a tried and impetuous warrior? The old hero, who grew to bloodshed as he grew in years, the ferocious Anjira. Is it he who lets fall the tomahawk, herald of the coming struggle? Uncertain and silent, all gave ear. Anjira, the old Anjira, has drunk more blood in war than all these warriors who now gladden the light of his eyes have drank Kawin at the feasts of Tupan. He has seen more combats in his life than moons which have stripped his brow. How many Pochiwara schools has his implacable hand sculpted before time plucked off his first hair? And old Anjira never feared that the enemy would tread his native ground. He rejoiced at their coming. And as the breath of winter revives a dry tree, he felt youth return to his decrepit body when he scented the war from afar. The Tabajaras are prudent. They will lay aside a tomahawk to play the Membi at the feast. Let Irapuã celebrate the coming of the Emboabas, and give them all time to swarm upon our plains. Then Anjira promises him the banquet of victory. Irapuã could no longer restrain his fury. The old bat can remain hidden amongst the wine jars, because he fears the light of day, because he drinks the blood only of the sleeping victim. Irapuã carries the war at the point of his tomahawk. The terror which he inspires flies forward with the hoarse boom of the boré. The Pochiguara already trembles as he hears it roaring in the serra, roaring louder than the rebounding of the sea. End of chapter 5